Hi, in this video I'll be showing you this. It's the Dyson V8 Animal Cordless Vacuum Cleaner. And what I want to do today is to show you around the vacuum cleaner, some of the tools and accessories that it comes with, and some of the features and benefits that it offers. So, I've got it charged up, let's have a look. So to start off with, I'll take you around the vacuum itself. So I'll just take that off for now, just to make it a little bit easier. So this is the, the main part of the vacuum. And with this, it is pretty lightweight. Uh, it's nice, uh, easy to hold design. You've got the trigger for the on and off switch here. Uh, what you do need to do, you do need to keep your finger on the trigger when you're using it, like that. And I don't know if you can see, but there is a little blue indicator light down here that shows when, uh, well, when it will need to be recharged. It's got a three stage process. Um, and when it gets very low, it'll start flashing as well. Now this model, you've actually got up to 40 minutes runtime. I always say up to 40 minutes. That very much depends on what you're using it for. And I know it sounds silly, but if you're using it as a handheld like this, say with a crevice tool on the minimum suction, then there's a good chance that you should get 40 minutes or sometimes even a bit longer than that. If you are using it on the maximum suction, and I will show you that in a moment, then, and especially if you're using it with a main floor head, then you won't get anywhere near 40 minutes. Uh, that's something that Dyson have put on here. So you've got high suction, extended run, and you've got maximum suction. So if you want the extended run, then this is just a little sticker that you can take this off. It's only on here because it's a, a new vacuum. Uh, but they do warn you that you've got high, high suction, extended run, and then you've got maximum suction, so, and I'll just show you that. So you hopefully can hear that there's quite a difference in the, the suction on the vacuum itself. Uh, when it comes to emptying the bin, because that's something that will be quite important to you, then it is quite easy. You've just got a handle on top. So all you do is you just pull that. And I mean, this has been used a little bit before, even though it's a, a new one. Uh, that's why some of the dirt's come out the bottom. But uh, when it comes to emptying it, all you do is you pull the handle on top, the bottom of the bin opens, and clearly what you want to do is you want to make sure you do it over a bin, not like I've just done over the floor. Uh, but So just make sure you do it over a bin, um, or a bag or something. Sometimes it's better to do it outside, because if it's full, and if you've got a lot of dust in there, then that can make life a little bit better. Uh, what you can do is you can actually take it apart a little bit more for cleaning purposes. Uh, there is a little button on the side here. So you just press and hold that. And then that comes off. So when it comes to cleaning it, then it's quite a simple process. Then just either get a dry cloth and just wipe it around here or get a paintbrush and just brush it over just to get the worst off. I'd always recommend doing that outside because it can be quite a messy affair. Uh, the other option is you can actually take the bin off. So to do that, you've got a little switch at the bottom here. So all you need to do is just press that and then the bin comes off. And with this, sometimes you, you can't give it a quick rinse. Uh, I suppose what I normally say to people is just use a damp cloth to clean the bin, just to give that a, um, a nice refresh. And this, the vacuum itself, there's not really any more here you can do. If it is dusty or dirty at all, then just give it a quick wipe over or just get the paintbrush and just give it a brush over. To put it back together, all you do is you just locate the contacts here. If you are washing this, then just make sure you don't get these uh, wet because it can damage the vacuum cleaner or it, can, uh, it wouldn't be covered under any warranty. If you've got things like this wet, then Dyson wouldn't cover that. Uh, and then this just clips back into place. So it just slides on the top and then you just knock it back down. And then the bottom of the bin just folds up. I have done a more comprehensive cleaning video. I'll just provide a link here to show you how to do it. Uh, Cause that's just really a quick overview. The main other thing uh, when it comes to the maintenance while we're talking about cleaning it is the filter. So you've got two filters on this one. You've got one on the back and that's nice and easy to take off. So you can just give that a quick rinse under water and then just pop it back on once it is completely dry. And you've got the one on the top. 
so this is a fairly standard Dyson filter. If you do need another filter, again I'll provide some links just to show you where to get them at, uh, at good prices. Uh, I'd always recommend using the genuine Dyson filters, there are a lot of aftermarket ones but just stick with the genuine ones, they're not that much and you can find the performance of the vacuum will be better if you're using the genuine article. So with both of these they are washable, uh, what I always say is make sure they are completely dry before you go to use the vacuum again. Uh, the reason for that is that it can damage the vacuum, so if you've washed it and only left it a couple of hours then chances are you will damage the vacuum because the filter will still be wet. Uh, so because of that, I suppose what we normally say, and a lot of people in our showroom do actually buy extra filters uh, when we sell the vacuum, and that way what you can do is you can actually have one set of filters that you've just washed and you leave to dry, that can because it can take 24 hours to dry completely, uh, but while they're drying you can still use the vacuum with the other set of filters. So I'd always recommend that as well. So the next thing I'll show you are some of the tools and accessories that it comes with. And the first one is this. This is the combination tool. Uh, this is a fairly standard tool that Dyson provide with pretty much all of their cordless vacuum cleaners now. And it does form two tools. That's why it's a combination. So you've got this one, which is like a mini upholstery tool. And then you've got that. So that forms into a, a like a dusting brush there. So that's quite a useful one. Uh, the next one is this. This is a soft dusting brush and this is a, a really soft, uh, it's a nice one if you're going over delicate areas. So I mean here for example if uh, this is a, a showroom, so if we were going around the showroom, uh, around some of the hobs, or if you've got things like keyboards where you don't necessarily want a, a stiff bristle brush to go over it, then that can be quite a good one to use. Uh, the next one is this, this is the mini motorised head. And this is quite a, a useful one. So if you're doing things like stairs, or if you're doing, say, the car, for example, uh, where you want a, a little bit more suction, then that's something that's really good because, I'll just show you on this, uh, the the brush under here actually rotates. So if you need something that's a bit more demanding, things like carpets in smaller areas where you can't use the main vacuum head then that's a really good one to use. And then there's this one, this is the standard crevice tool. Uh, this again is a, like the combination tool, it's a fairly standard tool that comes with pretty much all of the Dyson cordless vacuums. And I'll just show you, because these red buttons, which all the tools come with, uh, come with this, this is called the quick release system. And the idea is that the tool will be able to fit in the end here, and then all you need to do is just hold the tool, press the button and then pull it out. So if you have got a Dyson V7, V8, V10, V11, uh, what you can do is you can interchange the tools between them. If you have got one of the older ones like the V6 or DC59 or anything before that, then they don't fit onto these. But it's really good. I'm pleased that Dyson have kept the tools between uh, some of the higher end vacuums like this and above. They've kept them the same, so that's really good. So if you've got family members with long hair, or if you've got animals that molt, or even men in your house with hair that shed, then this is nice and easy to keep clean. Uh, what you'll find is that all you need to do is get, get a coin, pop it in the side here, that just twists, and then this whole roller brush will pull out. Uh, it's a really good design, it's nice and easy to do. Uh, this has been fairly standard for quite a few years now, and I'm glad the Dyson haven't changed it. So clearly to attach this onto the vacuum, you do get this. This is the main pole or the wand that Dyson call it. And again, it's using the quick release system here. And then that attaches onto the vacuum itself. So it's not as easy to do. And what you can also do is you can use the tools in here. So if you wanted to get up high, then any of these tools uh, you can just get up. So if you've got cobwebs in the corner, then that's nice and easy to use. Now what Dyson have realised is that when you're actually using the vacuum that you have to bend down, so if you're going under a bed or something or under a sofa, then you do have to bend down quite a long way to get uh, the position of it low so that you can get under the bed. So what Dyson have come up with is this tool. This is a cheeky little tool called the Reach Under tool and this is a fantastic tool. Um, I get really enthusiastic about this because I think it is very useful. 
So the idea of this tool, I'm just going to take that off at the top, and this just goes between the two, like that. And what it enables you to do, so rather than have to bend down to get it very low to go under the bed or sofa, then what you can do is you can actually press that button and this enables you to uh, basically reduce the angle that you have to bend down at. So it's really a fantastic system. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using it all the time. Uh, what I'd normally recommend is to only put this on when you need it. Uh, but what I will do is I will actually show you it in action. So to use it normally, and then if you want to use the reach under tool, then you just press the button. And I know you probably can't see it there because you can't see me standing up, uh, but I'm not having to bend down so far. So if you do suffer with, say, back problems, then this tool is really a fantastic little thing. So charging the vacuum will be quite an important thing, especially as it's a cordless vacuum. Then you've got a couple of options. So the first one is you can just plug this into the back of the vacuum. So that just plugs in into there. So that's nice and easy. So if you just want it, say, sat on a table or just rest it up near to a standard wall socket, then that's one way to do it. The other way, which I think most people will tend to do, is to use this. This is the wall bracket. And the advantage of using this is, first of all, it keeps it out of the way. So all you do is that will sit into the wall bracket like that. So it's, a, it's really a great design. They've kept this design going for several years. And what it also enables you to do is to locate the charger. So when you've got the charger, then you can actually sort of route it around the back here. So when you first install it, then you locate it through here, just pop that through the top. And what that enables you to do is when you put the uh, actual vacuum onto the wall mount, then it will charge at the same time. And it's just really a fairly simple design. Uh, but what you've also got is you've actually got space for two tools at the bottom as well. So although it comes with more tools, it does enable you to store two at the bottom here. So again, it's quite a, a nice and easy design. Now, if you want to see the V8 in action compared to some of the other models in the Dyson range, I have done a comparison video where you've got the V6, V7, V8, V10, and even the V11, and just how they vary. So I'll provide a link here and you can go and see all of these in action. If you're thinking of buying one of these models, then I have provided a link below to show you where to get one at a competitive price. I hope you enjoyed this quick video on the Dyson V8 Animal Cordless Vacuum Cleaner. Please give us a thumbs up on a YouTube video, click subscribe and leave any comments below. I'd always ask for comments, whether it's good or bad, about the video itself. Uh, what I also ask for is if you have got one of these, then let me know what you think. I'd always appreciate the comments on it, whether it's good or bad. Uh, also, if you're thinking of buying one, and if you've got any questions or queries, again, leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.